right, I mentioned I was going to give you the bill numbers, but they actually have not assigned the bill numbers yet to uh, to these two bills that Doug LaMalfa was talking about. It was just introduced this afternoon, so they haven't assigned the bill numbers. But the bill titles Protecting Children from Experimentation Act and the In Taxpayer Funding of Gender Experimentation Act. So it, it would be important for you to contact your members of Congress and encourage them to support these measures because that will help ensure that they get a vote in the House because they won't necessarily get a vote unless there is strong support. So anyway, you can go to TonyPerkins.com and find out more. Well, due to progress made last week by Republicans in the Texas House of Representatives, the state of Texas is now poised to jo join a growing number of states with laws like we were just talking about to protect children from experimental gender procedures. Now, as I was just talking about with uh, Congressman LaMalfa about his efforts to confront this at the federal level, these state laws come at a time when the public is perhaps waking up to this insidious industry preying on children. You know, you, you have to ask the question, what's behind it? Is it profit? I think it's evil. Frankly, I think it's pure evil. And I, I think it's a, it's, it's a part of the lawlessness we see happening. It's a part of denying truth. It, but behind it is evil. Now, a recent Washington Post poll demonstrates that a majority of Americans support protecting children from these procedures. Now, this is, this is pretty good. This is really good news because of the conversations we're having and that you're having with friends, neighbors. Guess what? People are saying, wait a minute, wait a minute. That's not what I heard. I, I wasn't I didn't hear this was just affirming a boy who wore a dress. I didn't realize they were actually doing surgeries that can be reversed and giving them hormones that affect their bodies for their entire lives and bring about a shorter lifespan. I didn't know all that. Well, as this ideology has marched through and captured so many institutions and industries, including medicine, education, and the media, not to mention the Democratic Party, the American people are waking up. Join me now to discuss this is Dr. Jennifer Bowen. She is the director of the Center for Family Studies here at the Family Research Council. Prior to her work here at FRC, she worked as a clinician and a researcher addressing the effects of psychological trauma she also testified before state legislatures in support of the legislation to protect children by ensuring they are not rushed into these irreversible and lifelong damaging procedures. Dr. Bowens, welcome back to Washington Watch. Always great to see you. It's good to be with you. So you've testified before lawmakers on the importance of protecting children from these procedures. You've got to be encouraged by the momentum. We're seeing that the public is waking up to this. State legislatures are advancing. Uh, these protections? Yeah, I mean, what we're seeing right now is a great exposure. The The curtain is being pulled back, and we're seeing what's actually been going on in in the psychology offices, the medical offices, and most, most recently, what's been going on in the research field. And uh, that's really important for us to understand this sort of um, trifecta of of evil that's gone on in our country and the money that's gone on to fund these particular But there's a few projects. brave folks like yourself and, and others that are willing to basically pull back the curtain on the fact that, number one, their research is fraudulent, to say the bad, to say the least. Um, and, and, and lawmakers now equipped with real information and the ability to dissect these false narratives are emboldened to stand up and do what they know intuitively is right. Yeah, that's right. And I think um, what we're seeing both in the scientific field, as we kind of like scratch the veneer of the research that's presented to us that says, oh, this is going to help you. You're not going to commit suicide. You're going to feel better about yourself. And we start scratching that veneer and we look at it and it's it doesn't fit any of the research methods that we're used to. So that we would say this is indeed having a, a causal effect on someone's right. mental health. It's not there. So uh, let me ask you about that. You know, this ideology has gone from the radical fringe 10 years ago to being pushed by the president of the United States. Why? 
Well, I, I think there are many factors at play here. Um, I think you have some people who are just ideologically bent on it, which I would associate with pure evil. Um, I believe that there are some who've been captured by evil. Um, and I believe that there are others who just look at the science and they say, oh, well, if this is helping someone, then we want to we want to be helpful because this is a generation, Tony, that is uh, loves the likes. You know, we get a thumbs yeah. up if we post something and we want to be liked. And, you know, we have to remember there's no fear in love. Perfect love casts out fear. So when we really love someone, we're willing to have hard conversations with them. We're willing to go places that aren't the popular, that are going to give us the thumbs up for our post. Right. Um, but if you step back for just a moment, just passionately, and you say, how is it that just in these couple of years, we all of a sudden have gained more knowledge and insight than all of human history to say that, oh, yeah, all you got to do is uh, g give these... Uh, experimental drugs to suppress puberty or do these surgical realignments of people's bodies. I mean, it's, it's all facade because you don't really change someone's biology. I mean, how is it that we could be so arrogant to think that we, we have the answer to this? Yeah, it is the height of arrogance, isn't it? It's playing God. And um, that's what this whole ideology is about. It's like, I am the master of my own ship. I can court, I start right. my own course. And yeah. it's just, we see it crumbling before our very eyes. And to your point earlier, we're seeing the public out outcry with this in the poll data that shows pe as people start seeing the the science and the, the outcomes of this these procedures, they're backing away from it. So this is a moment then for parents, and, and, and I know you've heard from, because I've sent some of them to you that I've heard from that are saying, you know, what, what do I do, my granddaughter, my, it's, it's, it's both, but girls are really being targeted with this. And, you know, my daughter, she's experiencing this. So this is a moment where parents, grandparents should realize you're not alone. There are a lot of people out there that see this the same way you do, regardless of what they're saying on the media and MSNBC, CNN, and even Fox. Mm -hmm. You know, so, so don't worry about what the media is saying. Don't worry about what the sports stars are saying. Don't worry about what the president of the United States is. You know it's your child. It's your grandchild. You know. So how do we have those conversations? I think one thing we have to just come to the conversation with is that this this has an underlining reason for its existence. When I say it, I mean gender dysphoria, yeah. that discomfort that someone is expressing in their body. There's always a reason for that to manifest. So we can't just take that as face on face value as someone really has a problem with their biological sex. It's not real. There's a real condition. There's some kind of uh, issue going on. So we might want to say, to that parent or that grandparent, why don't you look at their social media, look at their history on their um, web searches? So, so you're saying don't be dismissive of it. Yeah, don't be dismissive, but there's also a, there's a real issue there. That's right. But there's something underlying this revelation. That's right, and it, it all comes down to what do you really believe about gender dysphoria? There are many diagnoses in the in the DSM, which is like the the diagnostical diagnostic manual for uh, mental disorders, and a lot of them you ha you have associated with that disorder a root condition, which what they would refer to is um, the etiology of that right. condition. So in this case, it's there's a root issue that has not been identified by researchers, they're not talking about those root issues. They're just saying that gender dysphoria is this real phenomenon. But if we look at, let's say, trauma, for example, um, we, we often say it's an abnormal um, experience that initiates a normal response. So we don't say that it's the, it identifies the person. We say you had an abnormal experience. You are not that experience, but you had something happen to you. And the same holds true with gender dysphoria. How often is some type of trauma, um, abuse, or something related to gender dysphoria? Well, we know with the older cohort, so before around 2008, it used to be older men, um, older men, sorry, 
um, men who were not in puberty. <laughs> yeah. that, um, I'm sorry, I, I scratched that. That it used to be men who who experienced gender dysphoria, and then now you have this new cohort of young women who are identifying. So. Yes, there's probably trauma, there's probably autism, there might be other psychiatric conditions, there is also the social contagion issue. Yeah, that, that's not, I mean, that's something really new. It is new. I mean, relatively speaking, I mean, social media is, is I mean, that's not been around that long. No, and the problem here is that it hasn't been studied. Right, we're not even looking. We're not at it. even we're, we're looking just at it. Dismissing that, <laughs> going, saying, oh, well, you have gender dysphoria, therefore you need to go into this uh, treatment with drugs yes. or surgery. And you can get it in the first session without a thorough assessment. You can get you can get cross sex hormones the first so session. So what happens when you you take that path and you do not deal with the underlying issue? Yeah, great question because what happens is you're you're prolonging the issue and now um, I was just with someone this week who had detransitioned years ago. And, and he was sharing his story that he he realized he had all these trauma issues that were unresolved. And now he has, he's missing body so parts. So it's compounded. It's, it's compounded immensely because you've delayed dealing with the root issue and you've gone on this horrible bunny trail, for lack of a, a term. And you you have multiple issues with the, sometimes with the very body parts that were a source of pain for you to begin with. So it, it's, it's awful, it's absolutely awful. So, so if you love someone, you're gonna be willing to take the, what you said, the initial maybe dislike, and even, a, even what might be, although you don't wanna approach it confrontationally, it could lead to confrontation at least initially. But this is something you really should pray about before you approach someone. And I've always found the best way to communicate is, is through, you know, the Lord gives you word pictures. And, and so you, you can use word pictures and kind of describe, you know, what you're, you're, you're wanting to share with someone. But I think you should, parents, grandparents should prayerfully um, approach talking to their children and grandchildren about this issue, because that, I think that is the greatest expression of love, being willing to be even temporarily, maybe even longer rejected, but knowing what path this child's going down. Yeah. And the Holy Spirit, in the Bible, we're given a promise in, in the book of Proverbs that says um, that he will give us the ability to scale a wall and get behind trusted defenses. Yeah. And I love that proverb because when I when I'm meeting with someone that might be a little hard, I say, Holy Spirit, give me the key to get behind that person's the walls that they're putting to protect themselves from from truth or from from whatever the case may be that um, and that I can get behind there with the Holy right. Spirit and help bring freedom Penetrate to that person. Those, uh, and, and this is also something, Jennifer, that uh, pastors should be preaching about. Yes. That's right. This is this is something that I believe um, we're seeing the onslaught of it. I mean, thankfully, we're, as you said at the beginning, we're, we we have some good news on the horizon. But I believe that this was allowed because the church has, at, as a whole, there have been people who've stood all along, but as a whole, the church has not taken her rightful place as. As you know, we are the expression of Christ in the world. Yeah. If we're not holding back the forces of evil, who is? That is the role of the, the church filled with the Holy Spirit is to re restrain the lawless one. And this is the height of lawlessness. Yes. Jennifer, always great to see you. Good to see you too. Thanks for stopping in.